Hi everyone, welcome to Math and Logic. This is part 2 of solving job interview guesstimate problem, namely How many ping pong balls can fit into an airplane? We approach it as if we were doing job interview actually, with no access to Google, only with what is in the room and what you know about math, planes and table tennis as you enter the room. In part 1 we estimated how many of them can fit into one cubic meter. Spoiler alert, our informed guess was 20,000. Now to the second one, a bit more challenging. Estimating volume of the plane that can be filled with ping pongs. Unlike part 1, this one is ambiguous and even after deciding that we will be sizing Boeing 737 and I will also give you answer for 747, there can be many correct answers. How so? Plane is much more complicated object than a ball that can be described with just one parameter. It's very important to acknowledge this fact and discuss some details with the interviewer. Repeating from part 1. What counts is not a very precise answer, but showing your sound thinking process and that you don't miss any important details. So let's do it. Where can we put the ping pongs? Try to simplify your task here. What about the space in the wings, tail, toilets, all machinery under the floor and whatnot? Do I put ping pong balls between all those pipes, circuits or not? Do you want to calculate the space of all those objects? Me neither, so don't. Openly state that you will assume you need to fit ping pongs only into empty fuselage of the plane. If interviewer doesn't agree to this, then adjust. I want to keep this video relatively short, but I will also address this a bit later. So if you want to measure the volume of the body, it's quite natural to assume that the body of the plane is a cylinder, a bit shorter than the whole plane because the nose and back of the plane are not as wide as the center. So what is the distance from, let's say, back of the cockpit to the back door of Boeing 737? Can you compare it to a car or a bus? Do you recall walking along it when getting in or out? How long did it take? How big did it seem? It's better than pure wild guess, but still not good enough. It's best to have some more reliable measuring stick. What could that be? Imagine yourself inside the plane. What can help you to get the length of it? The chairs. Number of rows of chairs. Distance from the same point on one chair to the same point on the next row times the number of rows will be good estimation. So how many rows are there in the airplane? 25, 30, 35? Recall what was the last row mentioned when boarding was announced or when selecting the seat on the website. How about the highest number you ever had or saw on a label on this type of plane? I recall that it should be just above 30 rows, like 32 or 33. So what is the distance from, let's say, back of one row to back of another? Don't just guess, try to count. So let's take 5 to 10 centimeters for the thickness of the back of the seat. Now sit down on something. Try to measure the distance from your um, lower back to your knees. Do you have a ruler or A4 sheet of paper? You might recall that it's around 30 centimeters long. I know that my hand span is around 25 centimeters. If you don't know yours, then find out. This can be a very useful piece of information in everyday life. This let me estimate the distance as around 70 centimeters in my case. This of course varies. And finally, try to recall the space you have left from your knees to the next seat. What could fit in there? A book? Bottle? Bag? For me, it was around 15 centimeters. So I got total width of the row as just under 1 meter, around 90 centimeters, as a result of 5 to 10 plus 70 plus 15. Because I have just above 30 rows, so again I simplified by calculating 30 rows times 1 meter, resulting in 30 meters. Seats of course don't extend all the way to the back door or to the cockpit, so estimate how much you need to add. Let's say it's 4 meters total. So we have the length of our cylinder, around 34 meters. Now, the diameter. You will probably assume that the floor is at the middle of the cross section, so the floor is the diameter. That's not a bad assumption, but if you notice that the sides of the plane are narrower close to the floor, then you get extra points. Side note. If you want to account for all the machinery underneath, you could take, for example, one-fourth of the space under the floor only. To measure the diameter, you can again use chairs plus the width of the aisle, or you can estimate distance to the ceiling. I took the second option as the top of the plane was not much above my head, so I assumed it's 2 meters between floor and the top. Let's take away some to get the diameter. We end up with 1.8 or 1.9 meter. Now, here is the only formula you have to know during all that calculation, but it's a bit of shame not to know it. Area of a circle is pi times squared radius. Let's take 1.9 meter, square it and round it down a little bit. 1.9 squared is 
400 minus 20 minus 19, so 3.61, round down to 3.5. Now, 314, so roughly pi, times 3.5. 3 times 3.5 is 10.5, and 14 times 3.5 is the same as 7 times 7, so 0.49. So area of the cross section is around 11 square meters. Volume of a cylinder is that area times the length, so 11 times 34. 340 plus 34, in total it's 374 cubic meters. Cherry on the top is multiplying 20,000 by 374. Let's remember four zeros and multiply 374 by 2. It's 6, 748. So four zeros, it's 7,480,000, so basically 7.5 million, and that is our final answer. Around 7.5 million ping pong balls can fit into Boeing 737. Now let's verify it. Ping pong ball is really 4 centimeters in diameter, it was right on the spot. You could expect it to be a round number, so you are likely to hit bullseye here if you were guesstimating carefully. When estimating packaging of the ball, I should have added here 40% and not only 20, so I underestimated here a bit. By the way, it's worth remembering that tightly packed spheres take around 74% of the space of the package. As a result, I underestimated the number of balls that can fit into cubic meter. In fact, it's just over 22,000. Now the plane. As length, I should have taken around 31 meters, 55 for Boeing 747, and just above 10 square meters as area of cross-section. Impressive 35 for Boeing 747. This results in 316 cubic meters of volume, and almost 2000 for 747, so I overestimated here by almost 20%. The final result is around 7 million, over 40 million for 747, so I missed it by less than 10%. In the end, one underestimation with ping-pongs cancelled a bit overestimation with volume. And that tends to happen when you do your estimations carefully. And what was your result? Do you think this thought process was accurate or did I miss something important? Or got lazy with taking empty plane? If you enjoyed this, let me know in the comments, like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'm uploading videos with fun logic puzzles you can face during job interviews and describe out-of-the-box thinking methods helpful when solving them. Here is one with Indiana Jones running away from hungry tigers. I also post methods for fast calculation I use here in the video. They can greatly speed up solving such problems. For example, how to divide by 2 lightning fast like a human calculator. Thanks for watching!